Could what a defendant did at the scene of a crime one day be recovered by scanning his brain? Now, the brain is scrunched up inside the skull normally, which is inconvenient, so we can inflate it and rotate it around and then flatten it out. And when we flatten it out, we end up with something that's essentially about the size of a large pizza, except it's a brain-shaped pizza. This, you're describing my brain. Uh, everybody's brain, not just yours. I'm visiting the University of California, Berkeley, where Jack that's Galland has been putting people into scanners to watch movies while measuring the activity of some 30,000 points all over the brain's surface. On this uh, surface of this brain, you can now see that the blue areas are places where there's less brain activity, yeah. and the red areas have more brain activity. As the movies play, the images generate responses across the entire cortex. Some regions respond especially strongly. For instance, when there are faces in the movie, the fusiform face recognition area lights up. When the images are of places, a nearby region known to be involved in place recognition activates. But for every image, many, if not all, of the 30,000 points in the brain being recorded respond to a greater or lesser extent, building what Jack Gallant likes to call a world brain dictionary. Now, once you have a, a world brain dictionary for each point on the brain, you can convert that into a brain world dictionary. And that allows you to take some measurements of brain activity later on and essentially infer what movie people saw. This, uh, this is, uh, uh, am I hearing you right? Are you saying you can look at the activity in the brain, not knowing what picture the, the person was looking at during that activity, and you can reconstruct the picture well, from that activity? It's not a perfect representation of the picture. But you but get a, 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 what, some kind of fuzzy picture that looks a lot like it? The fuzzy pictures are actually the result of combining images from a collection of 5,000 hours of video downloaded at random from YouTube. Jack Gallant's computer algorithm looks for images that best match the subject's brain patterns generated in the scanner. If the image is something uh, really common, like a face, then we actually get a pretty good reconstruction of a, a fuzzy face or a person that you can see. If the reconstruction is of something more abstract, like this uh, sort of ink blob here, then there's, there's nothing uh, that we can do to reconstruct that fairly well. But here's well. an elephant. There are a lot of elephants. You? There are a lot of elephants, but there weren't in our reconstruction library. So the elephant here just looks like a shambling mound. Decoding from brain patterns what a person is seeing while in the scanner led Jack Gallant to wonder if he could decode what someone was imagining seeing, if he could decode an image in a subject's mind. One of my postdocs, uh, Thomas Nasalaris, spent a week memorizing four images. He would sit at his desk and he would just stare at these images <laughs> for hours and hours, trying to form the perfect visual image in his brain. Yeah. And then he went into the magnet, and we would just put up a word that keyed that image. So for example, one of the images he remembered was the Mona Lisa. And so we would put up the word the Mona Lisa, and he would form a visual image of this. And we would try to see if we could reconstruct the Mona Lisa by searching through the Flickr database for the image that was most similar to the one that he was imagining. And that's this result here. So on the top here, you can see the image he was visualizing was the Mona Lisa, and our decoded reconstructionist saw Hayek. Um, here's a soldier that he memorized, and we decode a jockey. And here's a, a cat, and we're decoding a dog. And here's a bunch of vegetables, and we decode a bunch of vegetables. So might we one day be able to peer into the brain of a defendant and decode the visual images he has stored there, in effect to unlock his own memory of the crime scene? Does your ability to look into his brain and see if he's seeing the place. Someday can that be useful in this kind of a case? Let's say, let's say we're years ahead now and we have that capability. Could that be used in this case? Well, I think the uh, ability to record latent memories is going to be very far in the future. So if he had the information sort of stored in his brain somewhere, but he wasn't accessing it right now, it would be very difficult to read that out. But I don't see any reason why in the next you know, few decades you're not going to be able to read out, say, visual imagery, so as people are spontaneously re recalling memories. So if you manage to prime his memory so that he was thinking about the crime or the crime scene, mm -hmm. you can imagine a technology that would read that out of the brain. In the early phase of this, I can picture um, a lawyer holding up a fuzzy picture to the jury and saying, now, this is the picture of what we say it is. 
And then you, you sure. can't, it, there's a little bit of interpretation that goes into that. We but can only you, hope that doesn't happen. But if you take the fuzzy pictures, I mean, yeah. just to play, you know, devil's yeah. advocate sure. here for a minute. Suppose we had the fuzzy pictures from our defendant and we could actually look at his memory of that evening. Mm -hmm. And we had fuzzy pictures that roughly look like the outline of a store clerk and of the actual scene that we then have captured via videotape. Yeah. And it's fuzzy, but you put them side by side and the defendant says, I wasn't there, I've never been there, and I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But you're able to actually see a pretty fuzzy image that looks similar to the okay. one that's on the video. Your Honor? This young man, I represent this young man, <laughs> and I'm going to show you a picture of a convenience store just down the block where he has been many times and admits to being there many times. Is the fuzzy picture of that going to, going to be the same as a fuzzy picture of the scene of the crime? Well, so you would have effective cross-examination just like you do for any scientific evidence, but it seems like having the opportunity to evaluate it and say, look, actually the setup is really quite different than the convenience store down the street and the, <laughs> you know, the shirt color of the store clerk and the setup of the, you know, it's much, so, so it's gonna be subject to interpretation, but it seems like it's better than just the testimony of the defendant. It might be actually really quite helpful I, I evidence. Hope, I hope so. It's, okay. The impression I'm getting is that it's just one more thing to argue about and the better rhetoric is liable to win the day.